Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna get started. So let's go over here. Um, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do, let's go to um, the labs and uh, actually let's go to the skill tree. Oops, I have to log in. Okay, so we're gonna be working on the Godot lab. Um, so you can open it up here and look at the instructions. There's a lot of instructions for this one, uh, but it's kind of an intro lab, so it, it goes into a lot of detail as, as to what is you need to do specifically. Um, I can also open this in a new tab if I wanna see the whole thing. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, the first thing that we need to do, obviously, is have Godot on our computer. So if you click on this download link here, it's gonna bring you to the Godot engine page. Um, and it should be able to detect uh, which uh, machine you're on, whether it's Windows or Mac or uh, PC um, or Linux, rather. Uh, I'm on Windows, obviously. You can download just the 64-bit version. Um, it's not a very big program, so when you click on this to download, it shouldn't take very long. Um, yeah, it's taking less than a minute. Uh, I already have a copy of it on my computer, so I'm not gonna reinstall it, but if you do download it on your machine, it's gonna be in your downloads folder. For the Mac, it's pretty easy. It's just gonna download a DMG file, and you can mount the DMG file by double-clicking on it, and then you can just drag the Godot app into your applications folder or onto your desktop or wherever you want it. Um, for Windows, if we go to Downloads, we'll see there's Godot. And just like we did with Pascal, we're gonna have to extract it. Um, so we can go to Extract All. And then you can choose where you wanna put it on your computer. I'll probably put it on my desktop just so it's easy to find. Um, so I'll go to my desktop and select Folder. Uh, and then I'm probably, I, if I click extract here, should just show up. So there's my desktop. And there it is. Um, so you can see I actually have two copies of it now because I had an earlier version of it. Uh, but so now I have 3.2.3 and I also have 3.4.2. So they release new versions of Godot every once in a while. Um, so that's why those numbers are different. Um, and the new versions typically will have new features or bug fixes or stylistic changes or other things like that that may be useful. Um, so now I have Godot. Uh, I have two copies of it. So let's organize this a little bit. Um, I'll just go ahead and delete my old copy of it. Don't really need that anymore. And I will empty my recycling bin. And so now I have Godot 3.4.2. And so I'll just leave that there on my desktop. Um, the other thing that you will probably want to download, if you scroll down a bit, you're gonna find this assets folder. And if you click on that, it's gonna download a folder called uh, 270 assets. And these are a bunch of assets that I've put together. So if you're working on a game and you haven't you know, built everything that you need for the game yet, you may want to have something that can just Pl be plugged in just so you can work on whatever you're focusing on. So if you open up this folder, um, let's actually extract it first. So I'm gonna extract all, and I'm gonna actually put this in my MMP270 folder next to the art folder, and I'm gonna click extract. And so if you look in this folder, you're gonna see there's a, a bunch of different things that we are gonna use in Godot. So there's a lot of art in here. Um, Oh, it's, most of it's under sprites, actually. Oh, wait, no, I'm under MMP270. Oh, whoops, I, I put all the assets into one place. So let's uh, put these into a folder. I'm gonna make a new folder and just call this 270 assets. So I should have made a folder in this place instead of putting them all directly in here. Um, so I'll just put all of these guys back in here. Okay, so inside the 270 assets, there's some audio. So there's a bunch of like sound effects in here. Um, there's some fonts, if you need to use a font. 
Uh, there's a bunch of scenes, all different kinds of default scenes that you can look at. Um, there's a bunch of scripts. So this is what we're going to use today. We're going to use one of these player controller scripts. And there's a bunch of sprites also. So there's a bunch of art I created for the project that I made last year. And so all that stuff is in there. So you can just plug it into your scene if you want to, if you're testing something or you want to see how something looks. Um, obviously, you shouldn't be using this in your own project or your final uh, game, but it's there for when you're doing labs, if you need something. Um, there's also some tile sets in there. Um, so we'll be using one of the scripts from the assets folder uh, in a little bit. So if you want to download that, you can. Um, and that download link again is right here in the notes. I'll, uh, copy this and put it in the, um, in the discord channel. So assets, so you can download it from there as well if you need to. Okay. Um, so we're basically just going to go through the instructions in the lab now. Um, so we've downloaded Godot and we want to create a basic scene. Um, I also have a folder that I'll share with you guys that has a default scene or a default Godot setup. Um, but we're not going to use that today because we're going to learn how to build it from scratch. So something that you might want to use in the future, but you don't need to use it right now. Um, so the first thing that we want to do, obviously, is just open Godot. So I'm going to double click on Godot and it's going to open up this project manager window. Um, I've got a few missing projects because I was just doing some tests. So I'm just going to remove those. And so this is likely what you're going to see is just the empty Godot window. And so what we need to do is start a new project. So I can click on new project or I can hit control N and I want to give the project a name. So I'm just going to call this my game as a default. You can come up with a name for your game. If you decide to change the name later, you can change it. It doesn't have to be. Uh, you don't have to decide on what it is right now. If you already have an idea for what your game should be called, you can go ahead and, and name it that. So I'm going to call it my game and I'm going to put it in my MMP270 folder, which is on my desktop. So, uh oh, I lost my window. Okay, this is a separate window. Oops. Okay, I don't know why that disappeared, but I can just do it again. So I'm going to go to browse and let's make sure uh, I'm on my C drive users. Here's my user. So here's my desktop and there's my MMP 270. And so I'm going to select this folder. So I'm going to create a game project in my main MMP 270 folder. So I'm going to say select current folder, and then I'm going to use the name of the game to create a new folder. Okay. So that's an easy way to do it. You don't necessarily have to do it that way. Um, but that's, that's usually what I do. Um, and then we have a choice here between the OpenGL 3 and the OpenGL 2 render. Uh, it doesn't really matter a whole lot which one you use. The uh, 3 is good for 3D graphics and you know uh, more uh, high level graphics. The 2 is probably better for uh, 2D graphics and web-based games, which is what we'll mostly be creating. So I'm going to choose the uh, 2.0 uh, render and then I'm going to click uh, click create and edit. And so this is going to open up my game window. Uh, and now we can talk a little bit about the Godot interface. Um, so uh, does anybody have any questions so far? Is everybody um, doing good and uh, following along? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, thank you. Um, if you do have questions or you get stuck on something, just let me know and I'll, we can pause for a second. Um, so here's our Godot interface. Um, I really like Godot. You can change the interface. I'm not going to change it too much because, uh, you know, I assume that you guys will be opening to the default and we want to go over the basics, um, before, uh, you know, we start doing lots of crazy stuff. Um, but you can like move the windows around and do different things with the interface if you want to change how it looks. Um, so it's a lot like Photoshop or other programs in that way. Um, but uh, to start, uh, we have like our main interface, uh, our main editor window in the middle. Um, and that's where we're going to be kind of like moving stuff around and designing our scenes and stuff like that. Um, in the middle on the top, we have a few different uh, areas. 
So the main ones that we'll be using are the 2D scene, because we're going to be creating a 2D scene, and then the script area where we're going to be writing our code. And it's nice that the script area is actually built into the editor, because some game engines, you have to use a whole other program to write your code. Uh, and that's one thing that Godot does that's nice, is the script editor is right there. Um, there are a bunch of settings. I'm not going to go over all of them at the moment, but you can see the menu up here. There's some settings for our scene, some settings for our project, for debugging, for the editor, and then there's some help stuff. So we'll look at those at different times. Um, one thing that I'm going to change is I'm going to change the font size of my editor. Um, so that'll make it a little bit easy for, easier for you guys to see uh, in the stream and if you watch the video later. Um, but you do not need to do this. So I'm just going to increase my main font size um, just a little bit. Um, uh, that might be too much. Let's go, let's try 16. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It'll be a little bit more readable. Um, it takes up a little more space on the screen. Um, so you don't have to do this, but for my stream, I think that'll be easier for you guys to see. Uh, so I'm going to save and restart. And okay, so now hopefully it's a little bit easier to read things. Okay, so the, uh, the next thing we're going to look at is the file system, which is actually this uh, area on the bottom left. And the file system is actually just a pointer to uh, the folder on our computer where our game is. So if I right click um, on this folder that is called RES or RES, that stands for resources. And if I right click on here and I go to open in file manager, whether I'm on Mac or PC, this is actually going to open up my uh, file, my folder on my desktop. And so I can see this is on my desktop in my MMP270, and this is my game. So if I go back to MMP270 and open my game, you can see that the files are the same. We have the icon, which is the default uh, Godot icon, that little blue face. Um, and then we have our project settings, which is just a text file with some different settings in it um, that we don't really need to worry too much about. Um, but we want to make some folders in here. One thing that uh, I really want to emphasize as we go through our demos is having good organization. It's really good to have good organization because as our project gets bigger and bigger, we have more art and, pro and scripts and scenes and all these different things. It can be very difficult to uh, work on your project if you, you know, have a hard time finding those things. Um, so I can create folders in my actual uh, file explorer, but I can also create them inside Godot. So I can right click and this will give me some options to create new things. So I can make a new folder. I'm just going to make a few folders that are kind of the defaults that I'm going to be using for my game. So I'm, I want a sprites folder where I'm going to save all of my art. Um, I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to create a scripts folder, which is where all my code is going to go. I'm going to create a scenes folder where all of my scenes, which is like my levels and uh, characters and stuff like that is going to go. Um, and let's see, do I need anything else? Um, if I need other folders in the future, I will, I'll make them. I guess I'll probably need like an audio folder at some point. Uh, but for now, this should be good. Um, and so if I go back to my uh, file explorer, you can see that it actually made these folders on my computer. I can see them and I can edit them in both places. So the file system panel in Godot is basically just like a little preview or kind of like pointer to what's actually on our computer. So we can use different things in there. Um, so uh, we'll be going back to the file system um, to add things uh, you know, as we're using it. The next thing that we're going to look at is our scene uh, window. So the scene window is the top left. And this is where we're going to be doing a lot of our structuring and building our uh, our scenes. So the we don't have a scene yet, so we can create one. And you can see when you create a new scene, it gives you a few different options. We're just going to make a default scene. So I'm going to click Create 2D Scene. And this is going to make a new scene for me. And you can see that the default option is this little blue circle, which is a node 2D. And a node is basically just like the most simple building block of a Godot scene. So most of the things that we're going to add into Godot are different types of nodes. So you'll have like a node for your player, a node for your uh, enemies, a node for your uh, rewards and pickups and things like that. Um, and that's basically how Godot thinks of different components and 
uh, how we are going to structure our scene. So every scene has a main node that everything else is put into. You can think of this as kind of like a, a little folder. And so we want to name this node. Um, so we're going to call this default scene. And so this is just kind of a sample scene that we're creating. And then you can see the tab up here uh, says unsaved and there's a little asterisk. So we want to make sure to save everything as we're working. So I can do this by going to scene and then clicking save scene, but I can also hit control S or command S on the Mac. And I can go into my scenes folder. So I wanna make sure this is in my scenes folder. And Godot has filled in the name already, default scene uh, that I wrote for my, for my node. I'm just gonna click save. And so now you can see a little arrow appears in the file system under scenes. And if I click on that, we see the default scene that I just created. Um, and again, if I click on my file explorer and I go into scenes, now you can see that default scene is there. Um, so we have a scene uh, and we can start building on the scene. Another thing that you'll notice if I click on this node over all the way on the right over here, uh, we have our little inspector tab. And this has different properties that have to do with a different node. So this is where we can change the position, we can change the color, do other things like this. Our default scene node doesn't really have any uh, properties that we're going to play with quite yet. So we're just going to leave this as is for now. Um, so I'm going to save and then I'm just going to go back to uh, my browser and make sure that we're on the right track. Okay. So yes, we're ready to add some images into our scene uh, and create um, some scenery. So uh, what I want to do now, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of scenery into my scene. Um, so I have, if you have the assets and you want to use something from there, or if you want to draw something and add it later, you can do that. Um, but I'm just going to grab a little tree that I have. So I'm going to go into my assets and go to sprites. And I have a little tree somewhere. Um, here it is, my scenery. So I'm going to copy this. Which one is copied? That one probably. And I'm going to go back to my game. And I'm going to go to sprites and I'm going to paste it in here. So paste. Uh, the new Windows 11 has all these icons that I'm still getting used to. So there's our little tree scenery. So if I go back here to Godot, now I have this scenery tree. And I can put that into my scene. So one thing that we want to check first is we want to make sure that this we're using pixel art for this example. You don't have to use pixel art. If you want to use something else, that's fine. But if you are using pixel art, you're going to want to check in the import that the filter flag is not on. Because what that's going to do is it's going to blend the edges into the rest of the scene. And we don't really want that with pixel art. We want to keep those hard edges. So what I want to do is click on the filter and then click re-import, and that's gonna fix my tree. Um, so one thing is if you know that you're working with pixel art and you're gonna be adding a lot of images and sprites into your scene, you can set it so that it always does that. So this is a good chance to look at our project settings. So I'm gonna to go to project and go to project settings and under import defaults, I can go to select the texture importer. So when we add images into the scenes, they're referred to as textures. So I'm going to click on texture. And then for the filter, I'm just going to turn that off. And I'm going to save that. And now any image that I bring into the scene is going to not have that filter setting on. So I don't have to worry about my pixel art uh, getting blurred uh, if I resize it or something like that. So I'm going to save this and go back to my scene. And so now I want to keep things nice and organized. So before I actually add in my sprite, I'm going to add in another node. And you can think of this again as like a folder. And so let me do that again. The way that I add in a new node is I select the node I want to add it to. So that's the default scene. And then I can either click this plus button or I can right click and click add a child node. And that either one will bring up this new node dialog. And I can search through here looking for my node uh, it's right there, so it's pretty easy to see. But I can also use my search box and just type in the node that I'm looking for. And then I can click Create. And that gives me a new node 2D. And I'm going to rename this Scenery. So that way I know where all my scenery is. And as my scene gets more complicated, I can collapse uh, my scenery. OK, so I'm almost ready to add an image. 
I'm gonna right click on scenery and I'm gonna add another child node. And this time I actually wanna add an image. So to, you, to do that, I'm gonna use what's called a sprite. And a sprite is basically any simple image that doesn't have animation that we're gonna have in our scene. So I'm gonna use the sprite, I'm gonna click create. And now when I click sprite and I look at the inspector, you can see there's a few different options. And the first one is the texture. And the texture actually refers to the image that I wanna use for my sprite. So I go to the texture, I click empty and go to load. And then I go inside my sprites folder, click on the tree and click open. And so now I have a tree in my scene. And so that's pretty exciting. I can start creating my scene. Um, there's a couple of things I might wanna do here. It's like I can change the transform. So if I take the transform of my sprite and I put in a different number like 100 uh, for X, I can move my sprite. Um, if I put in 100 for Y, I can move it down. But I can also use uh, the tools in my toolbar to do it. Um, so I'll do that in a second. I can also rotate the sprite if I wanna rotate it around, um, but I'm gonna leave that at zero. And then I can also scale my sprite. So if I wanna make the tree a little bit bigger, I can say two for X, two for Y. And that looks pretty small, but um, as we add stuff into our game, we might see that you know different images need to be uh, different sizes. So I think this is pretty good. Uh, so I'm gonna close this for a second. Um, and I'm gonna go over some of the tools that we can use to edit our scene inside of the scene view. Um, so uh, any questions before I do that? Makes sense so far. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So now we're going to look, we're not going to go over all of them, but we're just going to look at the tools in the scene window toolbar. So the first tool, which you'll have on most of the time is the select tool. And you can grab that using Q on the keyboard if you use something else. And this will let me select things. I can also like move stuff and I can scale stuff. Um, you don't necessarily want to do it this way because it might be kind of inaccurate, but you can do it like that. There's also the move tool, um, and this will only move things and it can't select anything. So you'll notice I can move my tree, but if I go over here and I'm not even on my tree, it's still moving my tree. So I'll have to select things in the scene and then move them. There's the rotate tool, which obviously rotates things. Uh, and then there's the size tool, which will size things either on the X or the Y, or if I hold shift, it'll do both at the same time. Um, so if I make some changes to the transform and I don't like them, I can always go over to my inspector and click on the transform. And you're gonna see there's a little uh, refresh symbol next to all of my uh, things. So if I click that, it's gonna go back to the defaults. Um, so if I click on the scale, it'll go back to one by one, and then I can scale it up and I can see that scale changing. And I can also, oh, whoops, go back to select and then move it around. So those are the basic transformation tools. Um, these tools we're gonna skip for a second. Another thing that I might want to use is the snapping tool. So if I click snap on and turn on my grid, then my tree is gonna snap to this grid. So that might be useful for designing your scene. I can change the, uh, the size of the snap. So if I go to configure snap, right now it's eight pixels by eight pixels with eight steps in between. So that's why I have like a ton of little boxes. I can change this to like maybe four steps. Now I have a little less fewer boxes, so I can move stuff around. If I change it to like one step, and then I increase the grid step to like 32 by 32. Oops. Now I'm not gonna have as many options, so when I'm snapping, it kind of moves to these like specific parts of my grid. So depending on how you like to design things, if you like things to be very specific, 
having that grid might be really useful because I can put a tree right here. And then if I make another tree, I can, you know, move a few boxes over. And so it'll be very precise as to where it's positioned. So you may like that style, you may not, you know, whatever you guys prefer is fine. Um, so I can turn that back off just by doing that. I also have the lock and deselect button. So if I turn those on for a sprite, I can't select the sprite and I can't move it. So that would, that, that'll be nice when you have a bunch of stuff in your scene and you want to move it around. And so if I want to get rid of that, I have to select the sprite in the scene menu and turn off the lock and the deselect. Um, let's see, I think that's everything in the toolbar that we need to do for now. We may return here um, and look at other things. So let's add a little bit to our scenery and then we'll add in our uh, character. So uh, if I wanna you know, build out my scene, an easy way to do this is to duplicate my sprite and add it. So I can either right click and go to duplicate and then I can move this tree or if I just hit Command or Control D, uh, I can duplicate it without going over to the scene view. So I can make a whole bunch of these trees. And then I can kind of select them. Maybe I want to move some of them down like that. And then I could uh, select a bunch of them and duplicate that. Oh, I forgot. I can only select these guys. So then I can duplicate a whole bunch of them and move them all at the same time. So depending on how complicated your scene is, uh, you know, you can duplicate one tree or whatever you're using at a time, or you can duplicate a whole bunch of them. Um, oh, I don't think I mentioned this, but you can see me scrolling in and out. I'm doing that using uh, the, the wheel on my mouse. Um, if you don't have a wheel on your mouse, you can use the plus and minus buttons in the upper left corner. Uh, there may be another way to do it, but I'm not actually... Oh, you can hold... Sh oh, wait, no. Um, let's see. I don't know if there's another way to do it, actually. But hopefully you guys have a wheel on your mouse. If you don't, um, we could talk about other ways to do that. Um, and then I'm moving back and forth by holding the mouse. I'm using the, uh, the middle mouse, the wheel button to move back and forth. Um, there's probably a way to do that. Oh, you can also just right click and move back and forth. So you don't have to use the mouse wheel to do that. Okay, so I have a little scene. Uh, let's make this even more. Um, so I'm gonna grab all of my trees and duplicate it again and drag these guys down like that. So I have a nice big scene for my character to walk around in. And so now I'm gonna get ready to add my character. So if you'll notice uh, real quick in the scene view, one thing that's nice about using nodes is since I put all of these trees into my scenery node, I can collapse that node. And so now I can lock this up and I don't have to worry about clicking on the trees uh, if when I'm designing other parts of my scene. And I can always unlock it and go in and edit it later. Um, so it's really good to have your scene nice and organized as you're building stuff, because as you can probably guess using a game, you're going to have lots and lots of different components in the scene. And so it's going to get very complicated as we build out our scenes more and more, and it can get very confusing to find the different components that you're working on. So I'm gonna hit Command S and save this, and let's see where we are. So we added some sprites, and it looks like we did all those steps, so now we can create a player. Um, so let's go back into Godot. So we have this main scene, uh, but now what we're going to actually do is create a smaller scene, a little sub scene where we're going to add in our player. And that's going to give us the ability to edit our player in a different place, but then also put it inside of our main scene. And this is one of the main uh, kind of functionalities that Godot makes for us that's really useful. So we don't have to build everything inside of one scene. We can have a lot of different scenes that all fit together. Um, so that's an important thing to start doing as you're working on your Godot project. So I'm gonna go back to the file system and right click on scenes, and I'm going to make a new scene and I'm gonna call this player. And so this is gonna be the main player. The other thing that's nice about this is if I have lots of different levels, I can use the same scene for my player and put that player into all of the different levels that they need to go in. Um, so that's another important aspect of this functionality. So now I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna use uh, a different node. I'm not gonna use my 2D scene for my player 
because I want my player to work with the physics of the game. So instead of creating a 2D scene, I'm going to click Other Node. And what I'm going to look for here is called a kinematic body 2D. So that's kind of a long word. Kinematic basically just means it moves in space um, and works with physics. Body is anything that we want to kind of like run into stuff or collide with stuff, which our player needs to do. And then 2D obviously is, you know, a 2D version of this. So um, I'll go over this a little bit more in uh, subsequent uh, demos. But for now, you just need to get a kinematic body 2D. So just type in K-I-N-E and choose the kinematic body 2D and click Create. And the first thing we want to do is rename this node to player because that's what's going to show up when we put it in our default scene. Um, and so you'll notice now once I save it, we see our scenes folder has a default scene and the player scene. Um, so that's good. And you also see a little warning sign here. That's not a big deal. That's just telling us that if we want to use a kinematic body, we need to have a collider. Um, we're going to go over colliders a lot in future lessons, but for now, it's enough to say that a collider is basically the way that we have our player interact with other components in our scene. Our player is not going to be running into our trees. They're not going to be blocking the player, so we don't really need to worry about it for today. But we are going to need it in the future, so we're just going to add it in. So I'm going to right click and click Add Child Node to our player. And now we're going to look for a collision, or what's it called? A collision shape 2D. Uh, and we want to use the shape, not the polygon. So just make sure you get coll collision shape 2D, um, which is the little square. I'm going to click Create. And we get another warning. It says that we have to have a shape. Um, so we have to go over to the inspector and choose a shape. I'm going to choose a. Uh, circle because my apple is kind of circle shaped um, but you can use whatever shape you want that matches your art so let's zoom in a little bit and here we can see our collider is that little blue area so that's not actually going to show up in the game we won't be able to see it but it shows us on the editor side how big the area for our player is okay so i'm going to save this and now i'm going to actually add in my avatar for my player art um, so I'm going to go back to my uh, file explorer and go to MMP270 and go to my art folder. And here's my avatar. Um, when I exported the avatar uh, before, I have this little eight here, which means that I uh, scaled it up by eight, which I don't really want for my game. So I'm going to open up the original art real quick. So I'm going to double click on avatar.piscal. Um, it's not opening for some reason, so let's just open Piscale directly. And let's see, can I drag this on here? Yes, okay. So there's my avatar. I'm gonna export it at a smaller size. So I'm gonna click Export and scale it down to one, and then click Download. And so I can actually go ahead and just put this into my game. So I'm going to go back to MMP270, go to my game, go to sprites, and just put in avatar.png. So I'll click Save. And so I'm done with uh, Piscal for now. So I can leave this. And I don't really need to save, but I'll just do it. Uh, and so now if I go back to Godot, now we see my avatar there. And so we can add that into the scene the same way that I added my scenery. So I'll click on the player and add a child node. And I want to make sure this is not a child node of the collider. All of the things inside of my player are just going to be part of the, the player node. So for this one, I just need a sprite. It's not animated yet, um, but we will do that soon. And then for the sprite, I go over to the inspector and click on the texture and click load and go into sprites choose my avatar and click open. And now we can see the avatar on the screen. That looks pretty good. But my collision shape is behind the sprite. So it doesn't actually really matter what order it's in. So let's move it uh, ahead. So I'm going to move the sprite up. And you can see it's kind of hard to see probably. But when I click on something in the scene window and I move it up and down, 
I get some different options. So if it's a blue line, I'm just going above the other thing. If it's a square, that means I'm putting it inside of the sprite and you can see that creates an, a problem. So I don't wanna do that. I just wanna have my sprite and my collision shape in the same, uh, in the same line. So you can see my collision shape isn't as big as my art, so I just wanna make it a little bit bigger. Um, but I have snap turned on, so I need to adjust this. Um, so let's just turn snap off. And it doesn't need to be a, the, as like outside of the art. Um, I just want it to be almost the same shape. So there could be like a little overlap if I run into like a wall or something like that, but I just don't want it to be able to pass through the wall. Um, so this is pretty good. I think that's good enough for now. I can also move the sprite around if I want to, although it's kind of tricky. So let's lock my collision shape. I can move the sprite around if I want to, but I want these guys to be centered so that when I put it into my scene, it'll be easy um, to use it in the scene. It won't be like offset at all. So you can see I have this scene is like completely centered in uh, my in this scene window. Okay, so now we're ready to add our player um, back into our scene. Um, or wait, we may need to, let me double check the uh, lab again. Okay, so now we have to add the script to the player. Okay. Um, so I'll go back to my assets folder. And I'm going into script. So we're going to learn how to write the script soon. But for now, um, because it, there's a lot that we need to explain, I'm just going to copy this player controller simple script. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to copy. I'm going to go back to MMP270 and go into my game and go into scripts. And I'm going to paste this here. So now when I go back in my scripts folder, you can see the player controller simple. If I open this script, you can see the code. We'll go over this soon. But basically, you can see that it plays an animation and it moves the character. Um, and actually, this is probably going to cause some errors, but we'll, we'll see if that happens in a bit. And there's some different settings in here. Uh, we won't worry about too much um, for now, but we will uh, learn how to write this script soon. So we want to attach this script to our player. So I'm going to click on the player node. and in the inspector at the very bottom here, you can see the script and it has another one of those like empty things. So we just click on there and go to load and go to scripts, click on the player controller and click open. And so now you can see it added this variable, the speed of the player. So we can adjust how fast the player is. Um, and I think there's gonna be some other errors that we're gonna run into, but we'll take a look and fix those if we do. Um, so I'm going to go back to my default scene. And so now we're going to look at how to add a scene into another scene. So this is a little bit different. I don't hit the plus sign. That just gives me generic different types of nodes. Uh, what I want to use is the little link sign. And this is an instance where it creates, basically our scene is like a blueprint. And this instance is like one copy of this scene for the player that we put into our main scene. So when I click instance child scene, it gives me two options. Obviously I wanna choose the player. I'm gonna click open. And now we have our player inside of our scene. And this is really cool because if we go back and edit our player later, those changes will show up in all of the different scenes the player is in. So no matter how many levels I have or different components of my game, as long as the, you know, the player references that original player scene, any changes I make to that scene will be updated in, the, in all of those different scenes. So now I have my player in my scene. Um, I think the player may actually work now. So I'm going to actually just play the scene for a second. And I'll probably get some bugs, um, but we'll see how it goes. And then, then we'll fix the bugs. So. Once I want to preview a scene, there's a couple different ways to do it. If you look in the upper right hand corner in the Godot editor, there's a few different buttons. There's the main play button, which actually builds the whole game. Um, right now, we only have one scene in our game, so this would work if we wanted to use it. But there's also the play scene button, which just plays the scene that we're looking at. And that's the one that I tend to use more often. Um, 
this one I kind of forget what this does. Uh, we can just ignore that for now. So I'm going to click the play scene button. And uh, Windows is telling me it's not letting me, oh, because it's using network. So that's fine. Um, Godot can use my internet. So I'm going to click allow access. But then I did get an error because I don't have an animated sprite yet in my scene. So um, what I'm going to do, what's the easiest way to do this? I should have uh, written something for this. Um, I'm just going to delete this code because I got it from the assets. I can always get it back. So if you get that error, just delete this code. We're going to add it uh, in a future class. So um, everything below this movement in any direction, you'll see there's a bunch of code here that is changing the animations. And it doesn't work because we don't have an animation. So we can just delete that and save. And then uh, I'll go back to my scene and try it again. OK, so now uh, I should be able to move my player around, but I can't because we haven't actually set up the scene to include the player uh, options yet. So that's the next thing that we'll do. Um, but this is pretty good progress. We've got a, a, uh, a working scene right now. So I'm going to stop that. Um, you can see I'm getting a ton of errors here in this debugger window. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'll go over how to use this in a future lesson. Um, so now we have to set up our input map. Um, and then we're almost, we're getting pretty close to uh, the end. So we just have a couple more things to do. Um, so the input map is basically how we map the keys on our keyboard or our mouse or other inputs to our code. So you can see in the code, there's these default actions, move right, move left, move up, move down. But we actually have to define how those work. So we need to go into our game settings to set that up. This is something that I have as part of my blank project template. So I do want to go over this so you guys see how it works. But in the future, you can download the blank project template if you want something that already has this part set up. So now we're going to go back to project and go to project settings. And now we're going to go to input map. And you can see there's actually a bunch of stuff already in here for uh, user interface stuff, um, which is cool, but we're not using this at the moment. So I'm just going to collapse all of these. And so what we need to do is add the controls for our character. And so the way that I do this is I add the name of an action and then I assign a key to it. And you do have to be a little bit careful here because the action has to match your code exactly. You can't use an uppercase or a space or other things that will not match what's in the code. So the first action that I'm going to use is move underscore right. Uh, obviously, this is for moving our character right. Um, and remember, uh, I don't, I can't use any spaces and you can use capital letters, but it has to match the code. And I generally don't use capital letters for, uh, for inputs in my code. Um, so you can change the code if you want, but it's easier just to do this exactly the same way. So move underscore, right. You click add, and then we can assign keys. So you can see move right here. Um, you can change it if you need to by clicking on it. And then we can assign a key by hitting this plus button. See, it says add event. Godot thinks of key presses and mouse presses and things like that as events that the user does uh, when they're playing the game. So I'm going to click add event. And what I'm going to add is a physical key. You can see there's also options for uh, you know, a, a game pad or um, a mouse, but I'm going to use keys. So I'm going to click on the key. For moving right, I can use the right arrow. Um, or I could use, if you want to use WASD, or you can do both. So I'll start with the right arrow and I'll click OK. You can't hit enter here because it'll actually change the key to enter, which is not what we want. So I'll hit right again, click OK. And then I can add another key if I want to also have D as an option for move right. So we have a couple keys. Let's add the rest of our keys. So we also need a move left key. So I'll click add. We need a move up key. We need a move down key. And eventually we'll probably want a jump key. So I'll put jump and add that in there, although we won't need that for today. Um, and then we might want an action key at some point. 
Uh, so I'll put that in there. So then let's define these keys. So move left is a physical key. It's the left key. Or we could do uh, the uh, A key for WSD. And then for move up, we have the up key as well as the W key. Move down, we can have the down key on the keyboard and the S key for WASD. And for jump, uh, usually you can do space. Um, sometimes you also could use like X. And then for action, uh, we could do like Z or uh, maybe F if you're doing WASD. Uh, but you can change those keys. You can choose whatever you want. The, the nice thing about this is you can add different keys there. You don't have to specify the key in your code. So if, different, if you want to use different keys, um, you can still use the same code. OK, so I'm going to close this. And so now when I run the scene, I should be able to move my avatar. Um, so that's pretty cool. It's not super sophisticated. It doesn't run into stuff. But at least we've got something moving on the screen. So that's a good start. It's moving pretty slowly. So if I want to adjust the speed, I can go to the script variables and move the speed to maybe like 200. And the nice thing about this is I can have different speeds in different scenes. Uh, since my player is a separate scene that I added to the scene, different scenes could have players with different speeds or other properties. OK, so that's a little bit better speed. So now we've got our player moving around. So that's pretty cool. I think we're just about done with the lab. So let me go back to um, my notes. And yeah, so we're almost done. We just need to make some documentation and then publish uh, a screenshot of our, of our lab on the open lab. Um, all right, so uh, any questions? Everybody um, doing OK? Um, hi, Professor. I do have a question. So yep. I noticed there actually are two different keys. One is called key, another one is called physical key. Uh, what's different between them? That's a good question. I actually think that's new because I have not seen that before. Um, the last time I used Godot, uh, there's no difference between physical key and key. It just had key. Um, so let's Google it because uh, one of the things that happens with Godot is when they release new versions, they change certain things to try to make them better. So let's see if we can find out. So Godot physical key versus key. OK. Um, I notice there's an option for physical key. Uh, is there a difference between physical key and just key? You can see this is from three months ago, so it's a relatively recent addition. And here's a blog post that explains it and a nice TLDR. Uh, so key W, W no matter what the keyboard layout, physical key W, D, physical key, key W, W on QWERTY, uh, American layout, but Z on AZERTY, French layout. OK, so that so I think that's kind of a, um, what do they call that uh, when you have different languages for different um, areas? Uh, localization. So that's a localization thing. Godot is actually not an American company. I think they're from like Argentina or something like that. So I think they have a lot of users who are, you know, using different languages as well as different keyboard layouts. So it seems like that uh, sort of uh, makes up for that. Um, so I think in that case, it's good to use the physical keyboard. So if a French, uh, if somebody with a French keyboard wants to play our game, they don't have to make any adjustments. Um, so uh, that's interesting. Uh, that was a good uh, question to point out. Um, oh, we have one more step that I haven't done yet, uh, which I forgot, which is add the camera. So let's do that now, and then we'll do some documentation. Um, OK. Uh, actually, one more thing while we're in project settings. So there's a lot of different project settings. We'll go over different ones. One that you might want to change is the window display. So the default window is 1024 pixels by 600 pixels. And you can make it bigger or smaller. Um, I like to do it 
uh, at 512, which is half of 1024. Um, you could also do like 1200 by 600, or you could do square. You could do a lot of different things here. The other thing that's an option here is resizing the window. I tend to turn this off. You know, if I'm making a game with like a bunch of different developers and a big studio where we can put all this money into making sure our game looks good at every size, you might want to leave that on. But we don't really have time or resources to do that. So, uh, for example, if I play the scene now, somebody can take the window and just make it a lot uh, bigger or smaller. Um, and I don't really want to spend time, you know, kind of making sure that my game always looks good because that's actually a lot of work. So I'm going to turn resizable off. Um, it's up to you guys. You don't have to do that, but that's just an option that you may uh, want to look at. OK, so one last thing. Um, I realize we're almost out of time in class, so this is taking a bit of time. But uh, let's just do the camera, and then we're almost done. So the last thing that I want to add, uh, notice that when I uh, play the scene that my player moves, but the scene always stays still. So that's fine. You may have a game that works like that if it's just one uh, scene the whole time. Um, but you may want your camera to follow the player. So the way that we can do that is actually just by making the camera a child of the player. So I can click on the player and add child node and type in camera and choose my camera and click Create. And so now I can take the camera. I have to make sure to turn on current. So that's how I make sure that the camera actually cho gets chosen by the scene. And now, since the camera is parented to the player, the whole scene is going to move with the player. So there's a few other settings that I can use there if I want. There's actually a lot of settings. But for example, one thing I might want to do, I can actually drag this out to make this easier to read, uh, is my um, camera limit that will prevent the camera from following the player but beyond a certain point. Uh, we don't really have to worry about that. We'll do that later. Um, but we can also choose a drag margin uh, and choose for it to be on or off. So if we choose the drag margin and turn it on, now you'll see that the player can move a little bit within the scene before the camera starts following. And so that way we can allow the player to move around a scene, but then follow with the camera. And you can see the offset is set to 0.2, uh, which is a percentage. So that's how far within the window can I move before the camera starts to follow me. So that's just an option. You don't have to use that, but I kind of like that option there. So I'm going to leave that on. OK, and now we're ready to uh, wrap up. So I've done everything I need to do for my lab. And I just want to do some documentation where I show my player and my scenery inside of a Godot scene. So I'm going to launch my game window. And I can do this one of a couple ways. If I'm on Windows, I can use uh, different screen recording software. Um, the one that I've been using recently is the Xbox Game Bar because it's pretty easy to use. So I'll just do a demo of this, but I have some links to other ways of documentation. So. I'm going to hit Command-G, and that's going to bring up my game bar. And you can see whatever window I have selected is what I'm going to capture. And I can actually record a video if I want to show my character walking around. Um, I may do that later, but for now, I'm just going to record a screenshot. So I'm going to click on the camera, and that's just going to take a screenshot. So if I go to All Captures and go to this folder, I should see that screenshot. OK, so now I can uh, use this for my documentation. And I can take a bunch of screenshots if I want to take more screenshots. I can also take a video. I'll, I'll probably show that in another um, lecture. Um, and if, you're, if you need another method of documentation, uh, this is actually on the Open Lab. Let me go back to the Open Lab. So this is spring 2022. If you go to the links and go to documentation, uh, there's a bunch of videos here that I found on taking screenshots for Windows, taking screenshots for Mac, uh, screen recording for Mac, and screen record for Windows. And then if you want to do more sophisticated stuff, you can use OBS, which is uh, a uh, streaming and recording software 
Um, so there's some tutorials there. Uh, if you want to go over it, um, if you have questions about how to do it, I can also help you out. Um, but that's where you could uh, go if you want to if you want to try different methods. Um, if you're on a Mac, the easiest way to do it I've found is to hit Command Shift and four, and then hit Space. Uh, which will give you like a little camera and then you can take a, a screenshot of the window kind of like what I just did with the Xbox game bar um, But that's covered in, in those videos that I linked. Okay, so I'm almost done. I have a video of my project. I'm gonna close uh, This window. I'm gonna save and I'm gonna close Godot. I'm gonna quit and now I'm going to go to the open lab and make a post. So I want to make sure I have my documentation. If you want to put your documentation into your game uh, or your MMT, MMP270 uh, folder, that's a good idea. Or you can just leave it in your captures folder. Either way is fine. Um, so I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to go to my open lab and make sure that I'm signed in. Um, and I'm going to click the plus button and just go to post. And let's see. So I'm going to say uh, uh, Godot intro uh, lab. And I'm going to add in my image. So I'm just going to drag it, get that little blue line, and drag it in there. And say, here is my first Godot scene. Um, I guess I don't need to capitalize scene there. Uh, and then let's add a category. So I'm going to go to categories. I'm going to look for Godot intro. There it is. Okay. And I'm going to click preview. And there we go. My first Godot scene. Um, so that's all I need to do to document my lab is I just want to see my avatar inside a scene. If you want to add more scenery, um, or you, you know, you could even make a whole, you know, uh, mini little game out of it. If you want to add more to it, feel free to, uh, you know, play with whatever you're interested in, in working on. But you basically just need a screenshot or a video if you want to do a video and uh, make sure to categorize for Godot intro and that that's everything that you need to do. So the preview looks good. I'm going to go ahead and publish. And that's, uh, you know, uh, that's all you have to do. I'll get a notification and I will take a look. Okay, so I'm going to stop recording.